G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. If you've been spying on me through the webcam of the observatory or maybe looking at my stats on the Light Bucket app, you'll probably realize that I haven't done a lot this month, but I have been moving around in here. Like I've been doing stuff in here, heaps, but it just doesn't show up in the data because it's planetary season. Saturn is rising early in the east. It was just in opposition just recently, so nice and big and bright. Uh, it doesn't seem to me too bright visually. You still have to look for it. Uh, Jupiter certainly is way more obvious. It's obviously the better planet. But the truth is I've rejigged my scope for planets and planetary astrophotography is a contact sport. It's not like DSOs where I can program everything hit the start button and basically just check my guiding every now and then. Planetary photography happens in real time. You're chasing the best seeing and there's a lot to consider. So I'll tell you what I've been doing and hopefully I can pull a photo out of my ass. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. So, story time. I was out here the other night, completely dark. Uh, I have an aversion to turning on the light, uh, even when I'm doing planetary, so I sort of stumbled out here and I duck in through that door there and I clock my head on the counterweight. The bar was going straight sideways, so I come in and just bang. Thankfully, the webcam didn't catch this moment of indignity, but I have to confess, it's not the first time. I've done that maybe about five times and you'd think I'd have learnt my lesson so far. Uh, public service announcement, these things are as heavy as the telescope itself and if you don't tighten these or you accidentally drop one, you will suffer some serious consequences. Thankfully nothing's been damaged except maybe my own ego and possibly my polar alignment. So anyway, I've been shooting Saturn and to do this, I originally tried the QHY7153 colour camera but there's a problem, not with the camera, but with where I am that prevents me from getting the best possible quality out of this. I have a dark sky, it's Bordel 2 or 3, but it's a coastal environment. I'm close enough to the beach that all of that water and stuff in the atmosphere really makes a difference to the scene. Not so much with deep space stuff, but for planetary, it is really, really obvious. So there are a few ways around this. I do check the jet stream. Uh, you can check it on this website here and that has a really fascinating animation but it's a bit misleading because the areas that are dark or that the jet stream doesn't appear to affect it still affects it's just showing you where the low pressure systems are swelling around so in my experience just because you're not in the jet stream area uh, you can still have very bad seeing from night to night and it doesn't account for all the other atmospherics like clouds and fog and everything else that's up there as well so from night to night, catching a planet means really just trying it out. Just going out there, trying, and you might catch good seeing for a few seconds and then it'll be terrible for another 30 minutes and then a few seconds of great seeing, which is why we call it lucky imaging. You want to take as many images as you can over the course of a night and then pull the best few frames out of that data. So using a one-shot color camera was just not cutting it. I was getting great resolution. The image is huge and the color is fine, but the red, green, and blue channels are dispersed enough that it makes the whole output quite blurry. So I wasn't really happy with that. For me though, fighting all of that sea air, I really had to hop back to the mono. And once I was on the mono camera, it allowed me to focus red, green, and blue separately because I don't have par focal filters and get really clean channels for each of them, even in poor scene but I'm still waiting for that night. And every year this happens to me, I just have to keep trying night after night until I get a good shot. Uh, I've been trying with SharpCap as well and SharpCap is still a very capable program. I pay for that and I have donated to Fire Capture as well because it is such a great program. My preference for planetary is Fire Capture, so I'll continue to use that. So I guess I'll just keep trying and hopefully one of these nights, the air will slow down and just be still for a few seconds, enough for me to catch this year's photo of Saturn. There it is. Saturn is up there, so I've got a live view running of what this sees on, on Fire Capture, just 
BNC to my phone. That was easy tonight. So now I can just go inside and everything else, the focuser and uh, filter changes and all that can happen from inside. Okay, let's change to the red filter. Get this into the center of the frame. Give it a region of interest, auto align. I should probably rotate this, right? That's kind of annoying. Hang on, I'll go rotate it. Focus to see if I can get it in a bit. So it's really hard to focus on a planet, but what I do is I look for that shimmering of the rings here because uh, you can see when they jump out of focus, they kind of look, they look like they double up. Uh, so I just push in and out of the focus range until I can see that has stopped. When you get to a position where it generally doesn't, and it sometimes snaps into focus, then you know it's sort of decent. Also, if you can see the Cassini division as well, and this is something I do a lot, is actually record and stack as I go throughout the evening so I can get a handle on just how close I got to focus because the stack will show us anyway. Not bad, but honestly a little disappointing for the red channel. It should be a little bit sharper, so I'm just gonna keep trying. But then I came back the next night. It was as clear as the night before. I pointed my telescope at Saturn, switched to the red channel, and saw this. The Cassini division was clear from frame to frame. The planet wasn't jumping in and out of focus like it was before. Even with the high gain set to 50 to 75 millisecond exposures, the edges were clear and well defined. This is what good seeing looks like. I knew straight away that my test stack was going to look sharp, so I took two minutes of video in red, green, and blue, readjusting focus for each one. can't believe it after five nights of trying going out there and literally banging my head against the telescope it's finally clear enough to see the Cassini division constantly consistently from frame to frame even in the live view uh, I, I knew as soon as I could see this that this was going to be a sharp stack and as soon as I stacked it I knew that every channel was going to be great and it was and I can show you now the difference between good seeing and bad thing. For a long time now, this week, this whole week, I've been thinking that this was my fault, that I'd somehow screwed something up, that my collimation was off or something. I knew it couldn't be the collimation because I'd only just done a video on this recently. And sure enough, it was nothing I was doing wrong. It wasn't the camera, it wasn't the focusing, it wasn't anything, it was just the scene. That's about it for me. If you wanna see some even better satin images, check out Andy Casely and the spokes and the detail on his one. And of course, the legends, Christopher Goh and Damien Peach. Planetary is fun, it is a lot of hard work, uh, I have to admit. Anyway, thanks for putting up with me and thanks for subscribing and checking out all the little shorts content I'm doing now as well, I hope you don't mind. Uh, this garbage clogging up your feed. Uh, but anyway, you've been watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die.